All right, in this 10 minute video, we are going to be creating this staircase and we're going to do it pretty quickly. The shear tool is going to be instrumental in showing us how we do that. Watch in this video to find out. Okay, let's go over what the shear tool is. And I've got my little collection of props here to make a very simple staircase to illustrate the point. So I'm actually going to start with this banister looking piece here and I'll change that to increment. So the shear tool essentially provides the same sort of functionality as the rotate tool, but there's one key difference. The shear tool allows you to rotate and change edges and vertices while maintaining the profile of your model. That is really important and I'll show you why. So I have my banister model here and I've just changed the origin point to the center because it's going to work a little bit better. What I need to do. So what I can do is I can just measure that up to my post like that and let's say let's say I want to rotate that okay so here is maybe rotate it something like that then I can move it up and we want it to line up with the edge here for example just in this area here okay we'll have to do go into edge mode, turn on transparency so I can see what I'm doing, I can select this whole edge and then what I can do is I can just rotate so it fits exactly what I want. Oh, but something's happened. Now that might not be very clear to you. I've got it to line up, but watch when I continue to rotate. Look what's happening to the profile of my banister. If I was to do that too far and go back, it points down and looks very, very weird. That won't do. This is where the shear tool comes in. So you come over here and you click shear, okay? And then you've got these controls which allow you to move it. But the beauty of this is that I can simply move something now like that and measure it up quite nicely and the profile my whole banister is preserved the shape is exactly the same then I can just move it into position and it fits exactly where I want it to next I want to demonstrate the tool interface so you can see how that works and how to interpret it so we have our object here I'm just going to go into edit mode Okay, go to face mode, select this face, extrude it, we go. Okay. Now, as edge is selected, I'm going to go to the shear tool. So, you're probably thinking, what is this box? What's going on? So, as you've seen me already use, these crosses are the actual shear controls. And as you probably guessed, they each represent one of the axes. What we then have is these little horizontal bars that we can grab and pull. And intuitively, it basically tells you the direction you are going to shear along which axes. So if I grab this horizontal bar here, pull it to the right, see it's shearing, being pulled in the same direction by my mouse, then the opposite direction as well. And if I then use the horizontal one, see it pulling it up and down with my mouse movements. Okay. And we can do the same in this direction. So I grab the horizontal one, shear it left and right. I grab the vertical one this time. See it shear down just like that. Okay. And so controls are the best way to use this tool in my opinion. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a practical use case for the shear tool and I've just built out my assets. So I've got this little staircase and banister going on and what I want to do is I want to take this banister, I want to take this skirting, I want to line them up with the posts that you see on the left and on the right and then I want to bring them round so that I get them the banister going in this direction and I also get the skirting going in this direction. Let's do that now. Go into edit mode, go into front facing view and I'm going to line up this banister first. I'll click this edge and I have shear tool selected already and hold this control a 
across so I can get that level. Um, but before that, let's move this down to about there. Turn on transparency. Go back to share tool. And let's get that even. That will do for now. Then let's do exactly the same up here. So I'll click the whole edge, bring it up a little bit, turn on share. And then let's just pull that across like that then. Going to do the same this banister as well. Going to go into paint mode, pull this across like that so that we can have it roughly level like that. I can scale it and scale it to zero. I'm just trying to give you a bit of an idea at the moment. What I'd like to do is extend both of these a little bit so that I then have enough shear to bring it over into this direction for both of them. Set this to global extrude. That. Then I go back to share to go to top view. I'm going to share this so that we can get it roughly where we want it to be. Okay. Next thing we do is we extrude it out again, bring that out to where we want it to be. Now, what we can do is just share this again and again, we can just pull this right out. And then we can repeat the same process for the skirting board. The secondary tool, which is part of shear, is called the shear to sphere tool. And that can be useful in certain cases. I'm gonna use this banister to demonstrate the point. Now I have like a loaf type step pattern on this. If I just turn on transparency, see it's got this flat edge and it's got this rounded end that comes into a concave pattern here. But let's say I wanna have this more oval, more rounded. Then shear to sphere is gonna let me do that. Now this is just one of many use cases for it. Bear that in mind. We've got shear here. First thing we need to do is left click on it and select to sphere. Now I'm gonna select this edge here, left mouse click and drag. See what happened there? Got a more spherical pattern. Then I need to repeat that every edge. Perspective. That'll make it easier. So I'm just going to quickly do that now. So I'm going to do what I did before. I'm just going to extrude this out. Okay, that should be fine. I want to show you something new. Now that we've selected that, as per usual, we have our options. So I'm going to grab one of these controls and I'm going to pull them down. And what you'll notice is, first of all, you have offset. And what offset does is that as you pull it one way or the other way, you get an offset in the plus or minus. The bigger the offset, the bigger the shear. If you want to have things not go past right angles, then you only want to deal with plus one or you want to deal with minus one. Then when you bring that out, it will always level. So we can see there if I turn off transparency. Okay, for the next option choice, I've actually turned off a bunch of assets. So all we have here is the skirting we've got rid of. So if we go back to Z view here, I have axis and axis or I think this is confusingly named. It simply means axis one and axis two. It determines is the shear gonna happen? The X, Y axis, the Z axis, you simply choose an X, Y, or Z axis for one, say go back to X, and then you simply choose X, Y, or Z for the second axis. So, shear always happens in a 2D plane on your 3D object. That is what these do. So, I've turned everything back on now. I'm going to turn transparency on, select my banister, so we can just get to watching this. So we've built this uh, simple staircase. Um, 
using the shear tool and a couple of other tools that we've learned about before like extrude tool uh, hopefully though you've got the basic idea of how shear works like the video or dislike it if i if i failed again maybe uh, but i'd love to hear what you think in the meantime i'm really grateful for you watching this video and i'm going to see you in the next one take care